Hi, this is Brian with Profilos Media and Post, and today we're going to take a look at adding 3D text into our live action video using the 3D camera tracker and some tips on getting some decent results. This is going to be a pretty long one today so that people who are just starting out can understand the whole process. We'll be discussing a bunch of different techniques, but as always, I'll put timestamps below so if you already know something, you can easily skip around. If you'd like to follow along, I'll put a link down below to the clip we are using. We'll be using the first 400 or so frames of the clip. Okay, so here's our clip. Uh, you can see we have a camera dollying behind a car. And what we want to be able to do is add some 3D text somewhere here in this intersection. Uh, we want the camera to go through the 3D text. We want it to go through one of the letters. We also want shadows being cast from the 3D text onto the street and also the car as the car goes through the letters. So it's a bunch of different things that we're going to be dealing with. First thing we're going to need to do is track the scene. But before we start tracking the scene, we're going to add a garbage mat to follow the car so that it helps with getting a decent solve for our camera. So let's start by doing that. I'm going to grab a polygon and we're just going to make a rough shape around the car. By default, the polygon will be it'll be set up for auto keyframes, which you can see right here. Uh, so we already have a keyframe here. So we're going to go to the very end, and then we're going to select all the points, and then just readjust our shape. I'm going to bring it right about the center, and if you hold down the keyboard shortcut S and click, wherever you click, it's going to scale to that point. So I'm going to click right around the license plate and then scale it. And then I'm just going to go halfway between the two keyframes is 200 and I'm going to readjust and we're going to do that. We're going to keep on going in half. So I'm going to go to like 100 ish, adjust the shape and then about 300, which is halfway in between. And then check in between each one of those. Okay, that's pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Okay, so that should be pretty good. That should be enough for our 3D tracking. So we go back to the first frame and let's add in our camera tracker. Add in a camera tracker and then I'm going to take our mask and add it into the mask input for the camera. And let's take a look at the camera tracker. Uh, first, let's turn on the preview auto tracks to make sure that we have the mask coming in the right way. And as soon as I turn it on, I can tell that I have the mask needs to be inverted because I can see the points here on the shadows and no points outside. So if we go to the polygon, back to the polygon and turn on invert, when we go back to the camera tracker, now we can see all the points outside. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the preview. Um, we'll turn on bi-directional tracking and just hit auto track. Okay, great. Once that's done, let's head over to the Solve tab and hit Solve. Okay, we got an error of 1.1, so let's... We want that a little bit lower, so let's select the tracks that satisfy filters and then delete and hit Solve again. Okay, and now we got an error of 0.43, which is probably pretty good. So now we can set up our world scene. So let's go over to export and let's open up the 3D scene transform. Click on unaligned and then we're going to go back to the beginning and we need an origin point. It's kind of hard to see the tracker. So one thing you can do is over in options of the camera tracker and come down and click on darken image and then we can see our points a little easier. So I want an origin maybe here. So go back to the export, set that as the origin. And then I want to uh, select a whole bunch of trackers that are on the ground. So holding shift, I'm just going to grab a lot of these trackers in the center. And I'm going to go through and keep on grabbing them so that we can get a nice ground plane. Now the most important section is going to be right in here. So I want to make sure that I grab trackers in this area, like these right here. And once I have all of those selected, something like that, 
I'm going to set that as the orientation. So we'll set that. Once that's done, let's click aligned and then let's export out our camera. Now let's set this up a little bit. So I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to disconnect the camera tracker. I'm going to push it over to the side. I don't want to delete it yet. From the camera tracker renderer, we're going to go into the media out. Okay, and let's just move this around. Something like that. And let's take a look at our 3D camera to see if everything lines up well. So I'm going to right click in the 3D viewer under camera, camera 3D1. So we're looking through the camera. And let's make these point clouds a little smaller. So under point cloud, let's go to point. Uh, we can bring that down a little bit. And let's just take a look. Let's go to the back. So right now I can see the horizon line looks pretty good. And let's just play through it to see if we have any major bumps or anything like that. So we have these straggler red tracking markers, but that's no big deal. Everything looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks like a pretty good scene. So now that we have our world space set up, we can add in our 3D text. So one way we can do that is let's go over to the intersection and let's try to find a point where we want to add our 3D text. So I'm going to we'll put it somewhere around in here. So like this point here. So I'm just going to click and drag, select it, select the point and then right click and then copy position. And then we're going to use that position for our 3D text. So I'm going to grab a 3D text. Let's drop it into our scene and in that 3D text, let's add in resolve. And then over in the transform, let's go to transform and let's paste our copied point. So right click on translation, paste translate group settings. And that's going to push our 3D text to that point in 3D space. Uh, obviously that's too large, so we're going to shrink that down. Something like that. And so now our text is in 3D space, but it's not 3D. It's, right now it's flat. So let's change that. Let's go back over to the text. And if we come down to the bottom, we have extrusion. So for us to be able to see the extrusion, we're going to need to turn on shadows. So at the top of the viewer, you just click on this button here and come down to shadows. And then you'll be able to see the extrusion. So let's go back down to extrusion and let's change the depth. And let's make it decent, something like that, so you can really see the extrusion. And then maybe add a little bit of bevel width and depth. Yeah, something like that, just to give it a little bit of an edge. There's a lot that you can do in the 3D text, which is definitely would be a video all on its own. There's plenty of videos online that you could probably look up that are just about all the options you have with 3D text. But for today, just a basic 3D text. So now that we have our 3D text set up, what we want to be able to do is we want our camera to go right through the O of the resolve. So let's see how we can line that up. We can do it right here in the viewer, probably. We're still in our looking through our merge 3D through the camera, and we can adjust this to position it. So we can do this and just kind of go through and make sure that we line it up correctly. Okay, got a little bit of a problem. The front of the text is being clipped off, and that's because the clipping is too large on the camera. And so we can fix that. Now, this actually came up in, in a comment rec recently about, uh, I think it was on the last video, where the clipping occurred and clipped off the text before it got to the camera. One way we can do that is in the camera itself, if we go to controls, you can see right here we have clip. And this is the range that the camera is going to pick up. And our near is 0.1. So we can change that number. So we can unlock the camera. Try something like 0.05. And now you can see, there we go. And let's relock that camera. Just to make sure it doesn't get moved. We can go forward. And you can see, again, it clips off. Now, the reason that's clipping off is because our scene is not big enough. So we're going to have to re we have to scale the whole scene if we want to get this to work properly. So you can't go any lower than 0.05, so that means we have to scale up the scene. So one way we can do that, since we haven't deleted the camera tracker yet, 
And I'm going to go back to the beginning here. Go to the camera tracker. And right down here in the 3D scene transform under the export, you can see there's an option here for scale. So what we can do is click on unaligned, go down to scale. Let's move that up to five and then click aligned. And now all we need to do is update previous export. So if we click that, now we come back to the merge 3D scene. You can see that it scaled up our entire scene. Now, of course, our resolve got pushed to the wrong position, but we can fix that real quick by let's go over here and let's find that point that we used. It's actually kind of still selected. So I'm going to right click on that, copy that point, and then go into the text, go to transform, under translation, paste translate group. And now it's positioned back where it was. And now we can scale it up some. And now that's going to reset everything. So in the camera, we're going to have to re-put in our clipping. So I'm going to unlock the camera, put in 0.05, lock it back up. And now we should be able to zoom in through the O and it won't clip. Okay, so now we can just position this. Okay, we're getting up there. Okay, good. All right, great. So now we have the camera going through our 3D text. So that's one part of it, and we fixed our clipping. The next thing we want to do is we want some shadows on this thing so that they line up on the street. So let's look at how we can approach that. Now we can just add in a spotlight and move it around in 3D space and kind of roughly figure out where the space is and that way. But one thing you could do, I just want to show you an option is that we can use some of the clues we have here in the scene. So for example, right up here, I have a point on this lamp. And if I come through the scene, I can see right down on, well, it's hard to see. If, you, if, it's, if your grid is too tight, you can turn that off temporarily. So right click, 3D options, go down, turn off the grid. Uh, we can see right here is a shadow of that lamp. So we can use these cues to help us set up our light. And that's what we'll do now. So I have this point at the top of the light selected. I'm going to right click. Let's copy that point and let's add in a spotlight and drop that into our scene. And inside that spotlight, let's go to the transform and under translation, right click, paste translate group. Now it's going to push that light up to there. Now I want it to face exactly to, the, you know, this shadow on the ground. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways we could do this. So if we go over to our spotlight, we have this option down here at the bottom called Use Target. And what that does, once we click that on, let me open up the view. You can see it added this axis right here. And that is going to point the light towards wherever that target is. So if you look here from the side, you can see here's our light facing that target. So if we can move that target to here, that'd be great. There's a couple of ways we can do this. Uh, just real quick, I want to show you one way if you wanted to. You could right click, go to point cloud because we have that one point selected. Come down to locations and toggle locations. And now it's giving you the XYZ values of that point right on the screen. And you could type them right in. Uh, but I'm going to show you another way. So I'm going to right click point cloud and turn that off. Uh, another way we could do it is by using the picker. Now, if I grab the picker and try to grab that point, look at the values on the screen, the X, Y, and Z values. Those are definitely not correct. It's like it's, it's, it's going way too far out. I can't grab the points. And that's because you can, it's you looking for an object to place it on. So if I bring it over here to the text, you can see the values get much smaller and that's a reasonable, you can see even in the left viewer that it's connecting to the 3D text. But what we want is it to face right here on the ground so that the angle of the light is the right angle. So what we can do is let's turn on this ground plane Right now it's in wireframe and that way we can't connect to it. So let's turn that off. But now we can't see. So what we could do is go over to the material and turn off the opacity. That makes it live, 
but we can see through to the ground. Okay, so now we can go back to the spotlight, and now if we use the picker, you can see as I go across the ground, you can see the X, Y, and Z values are much more appropriate for what we're looking for. So now I'm going to come a little bit closer, and we wanted the top of the light. So I'm going to grab pick, and let's go right to the top of the light, which is right about there-ish. And now that angle is pretty darn good. So now we need to get the light to cover all of the 3D text. Uh, so one thing we could do is let's go back to the beginning just so we can see what's going on. And one thing we can do is just bring this light way up into space. So we want to keep the angle, so the only thing we want to touch is the Z. And we're just going to bring this way up like that. Okay? And now we got, you know, a decent lighting on. Yeah, that looks great. And that lighting looks pretty representative of the 3D scene. Okay, now that we have the light in there, now we need to see some shadows. So how are we going to do that? Um, let's take a look at the ground plane. And we're going to bring our opacity back, and now we can see our shadows. But we can't see our scene. Now, typically you want to have this all broken up, but just if you were to want to just render this out the way it is, here's a quick way to, to render the scene out if you don't have to do anything more with your 3D text. So in the ground plane, first, well, let's, uh, we're going to have to change the color to white of the ground plane. So by default, it's this color. Let's make that pure white. So it's all one, one. Let's turn off lighting. So it's only capturing the shadows. Let's look through the camera renderer. So here's the camera renderer. In the camera renderer, let's change the render type to software renderer. Turn on lighting and shadows. Now we can see that right there. Now if we wanted to have this composite, we can go into the ground plane itself. Under controls, we can go to blend mode. And because we're using the software renderer, we can change this to multiply. Once we do that, now we have our 3D text composited into the scene, but it's composited through the 3D scene. It might be okay for if you're doing some quick, you know, fun stuff. This is fine, but typically you want to separate all of this out, and we'll get into that in a minute. Let's take a look at the shadow and just work on the shadow while we have it set up like this before we start breaking everything apart. So I'm going to go into the spotlight, and let's go to controls, and let's open up the shadows. There's a bunch of different things we can do. Uh, one thing we can do is we can change our cone angle. Let's bring that up, and that making it, it's, that's making it look really crazy. Uh, another thing that we can do is under softness, let's bring that to constant, and that's way too blurry. If we look at the scene, we have pretty hard light coming from the sun, so we can bring that softness down. Maybe something like this. And you have a bunch of different options here. You can try some, the variable can work really well. We'll just bring that down. That looks pretty good. Uh, but we'll, we'll stay with constant. Another thing we can do is we can turn up the shadow map size. This is a make a big difference, but it also costs more processing power. So let's try that. We're gonna go up to four. 4K is actually looking pretty good. Actually, bring that cone angle back down actually looks pretty good. That's that's kind of what we're looking for. That looks pretty nice. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, good. So now that we have our shadow done, the next thing we're going to need to do for this scene is that we have this car going through the text. So we're going to need a roto shape for this car to block out the text until the car goes through it. Okay, so let's make a let's go back to the very beginning and I'm going to make this still single frame and let's do a roto shape for this car so I'm gonna just go right to the original footage and one way we can do this is using a planar track so I'm gonna add in a planar track bring that up here let's zoom in here and we're gonna make a planar track that goes kind of around this whole car uh, the reference time is set to the beginning for this, I just need it for the roto shape, so I'm going to change it from perspective to translate rotate scale, and that'll probably be good enough for this, and let's track forward. 
Okay, great. That looks like a decent track. So I'm going to go back to the first frame and let's create planar transform, which is right here. And I'm going to use this to drive my roto shape. So I'm going to grab a polygon and make sure we're on the first frame. I'm going to do, you know, a halfway decent roto shape on this car. Okay, so we'll just say that's good enough. And we're going to connect our polygon shape into the yellow input of the planar tracker. That way it'll add this transformation, and then we can use that as a mask to cut out. And so now you're going to see why this, is, this setup right here is a problem. It's fine for a quick 3D text, but you need a lot more. So what we can do is let's look through here, and now we can add in our mask. But once we do that, you can see that it's cutting out everything, the original footage and everything. So we really want, we want the text, the 3D text and the shadow separated as a different pass that we merge on top of the original footage. First of all, let's change the shape and invert it so that it's the right way. So here we go. And now you can see that's going to go through. And that looks pretty good. We'll probably have to tighten up the roto, but for the most part, that looks great. Okay. To get this all done right, we're going to definitely have to change the way that everything's set up. So let's do that right now. And we're going to break this whole thing apart and turn it into separate passes. So I'm going to make a little bit more room here, and we're just going to focus on this area. I'm going to add a little dot here because I'm going to want to have the, the background and the camera for reference here and there, uh, but I ultimately want to turn that off. So let's take the media in out of the camera, and we're going to add a merge after our renderer and then we can this is whoops gonna render is gonna go into the foreground and this merge is gonna go into the media out and then our original clip is gonna go and now if we look through we now we have our background but now we have all of our shadows and stuff like that we got to fix so I'm going to grab this, little organizing. I'm going to unhook the ground plane. So right now, if I look at the render, we have our 3D text moved, moving in, and that's great. And if we put our mask on, you can see we got our mask that cuts out the car. Okay, that's great. Now we want the shadows on a different layer. So let's set up that. I'm going to grab a 3D merge. In that 3D merge, we want a renderer. And we're going to merge this over, over the top. So it's in the foreground of our original clip. And this is going to be our shadow. Put that into the merge. And now we want all of this stuff to go right in here, except we just don't want the text to show up. So we can do that by grabbing everything, go right into the 3D merge. Let me just make sure everything's set up first. So in the renderer, we want software, renderer, light, shadows. Um, and so we could do that by using an override 3D, which we can block just the text, but it can still be used as shadow caster. Let's open uh, override 3D. And holding shift, we're going to drop it in line here. So what that's going to do is going to take all this 3D information, the camera, the text, and the light, and bring it into here. And in this override 3D, all we want to do is do unseen by camera, unseen by cameras. And that's going to turn off the text. So if I look into our 3D scene now, you can't see, if we look at our render here, we can't see any text. Uh, we can't see anything right now, and that's because the lights aren't coming through. And to do that, we need to go into this Merge 3D and turn on Pass Through Lights. I'm going to do that, and that's going to pass the lights through here into our scene. 
Now we got our scene. You can see our shadow right here. Now if we look in the merge, we let's see what our render looks like. So our render is black. And that is probably because, yeah, if we go back to our ground plane, we remember we changed the blend mode in here uh, to be able to look at the shadow pass uh, through the 3D scene. We just need to change that back to additive. And there we go. Okay, so now this is set up. This is our render from this shadow. So we have a shadow pass by itself coming on top. And so now all we need to do is in this merge, change it to multiply. There we go. And now we have our shadow pass all by itself. And we can block that out using the same roto shape. So we're going to do put in, that in there. And that'll block the mat, uh, the shadow from going on to the car. Okay. Okay. So now, now we have a pretty decent setup. So here we have our text. We have our car going through, and now we just need to have the car go through. Okay, so where do we want the 3D tax to come in front of the car? Where is the point? I would say it's going to be somewhere, let's zoom in here, just about as the tires are getting to the shadow is probably when this is popping back. So it's probably right around in here. Let's say 155. So at 155, we want the 3D tax to go in front of the car. One of the limitations is we don't have, in Fusion, we don't have a Boolean operation for 3D models, which would be cool because you could take like a 3D model of a car, have it go through the tax, and you would see it cut out the letters. Uh, but whatever, it, this is a pretty cool effect, even if you can't do that. Anyway, we want to set up turning off this mask at this frame. So there's a bunch of different ways we could do that. We could copy and paste this and turn it off and that kind of a thing. Um, but I'm going to look at another method, and that is to, let's grab a merge, bring it right on to here from our planar tracker, and then add a background. And we're going to add this background into the foreground. And once we do that, you can see that the letters are out in front now. And now we can, inside the merge, we can use this blend mode to go between the two. So this is just one way you could do it. There's other ways you could do it, I'm sure. So right now on frame 155, we want the car to be in front of the 3D letters. And so I'm going to hit a keyframe here on this side. Then I'm going to go one frame forward and then turn it on. And so that's going to be our transition point right there. So on frame 156, the car is behind the 3D text. We're not going to need to worry about the shadows on the ground because, because the car is on top of them. So And we already have the mask going, so that looks good. So right now we have what? I think we have everything looking pretty good. I mean, gotta, I got to mess around with this the roto shape a little bit to refine it because uh, it looks like it's coming off just a little bit. But overall... And then we get to this point. So the last thing we need to do to sort of really get this thing looking, looking pretty good is to get a shadow on the car as the car goes through. So how can we do that? Well, one way we can do that is by using a, another plane that kind of fits the car and then use that to follow the car. So let me show you how you can do that. So let's open up a split view, and we're going to look through our 3D scene. Let me turn on the shadow shadows here so we can kind of see this thing a little bit better. We could use the 3D text for the placement of the card. So I'm going to select the 3D text, right click, copy, and that's going to copy all the transformation information. Then I'm going to grab an image plane, bring it in, and I'm going to throw it into our 3D scene. Okay, and we're, it's good. this is not in the right place. We're going to put this in a different place, but just to line it up, we'll put it here. So in this image plane, let's go to Transform, under Translation, Paste, Translate, Group Settings. And that's going to push that card into 3D space right here. Okay, so that's right behind the 3D text. So now all we need to do is shrink this card down. So we want to scale this thing down 
the car down just so we can use it to line up with the back of the car because we because the car is moving away. So we need to make this card follow the car moving away from the text. So let's see how we can do that. One thing we could do is in the image plane controls, let's turn on wireframe. I'm going to bring this 3D view up and then, okay, we're looking through the camera. I'm going to bring back our background just to make it easier. So now we can kind of see and we can just scale it down to fit the back size because we know it's in the right spot because this is right where the car goes through the 3D text. So let's just scale that down. So we'll go into transform. Let's unlock the scale and let's bring this down, bring the Y down. I'm going to move this over, something like that. Uh, now, the what I'm kind of looking at is the very bottom of this, okay? I want this. This is going to be my guide to help me figure out where in Z-Space the car is going to be. So I'm just going to squish this down a little bit more. So it's basically the size of the car. So it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just got to be close. We need something to guide. Okay, so at this point, that looks pretty good. And as a matter of fact, if I uh, turn off the wireframe, you can see I got my shadows already going. You can sort of see the shadows on the wireframe. What I want to do is in the transform, we're just going to move in Z. So using this translation is what we're going to use. So I'm going to hit a keyframe here. And then let's go a handful of frames, like 170. And then just using the Z, we're going to move this in Z space until the very bottom of this lines up with the car. Because that's what we're kind of using as our reference. So if I just go backwards, you can see the shadow moving. And I go right to the bottom of the shadow. That's about the right location for the 3D space of the car. And the reason we know that is because we put a ground plane and we're just kind of the car is moving right along that ground plane. And so that's how we can reference it. Okay. So we don't have enough. So we still got to go another handful of frames. So I'm going to go probably 183. And then we're going to move the Z again back until, yeah, right about there. Until the very bottom of this gets to the shadow. And that should be enough. Uh, at this point, there's no more shadow on there. And you can see that more clearly if I turn off the wireframe. There's no more shadow there. So now as we move forward, you can see the shadow come on. Great. Okay, and that looks like it's pretty good. So now let's take that, and we're going to unhook it here, and we're going to set it up on its own shadow path similar to this. And the reason that we're going to do that is because if remember, we did this polygon, this mask right here, this mask, oops, this mask is cutting out everything in the car. We want just the opposite for the sh shadow pass for the car. So we're going to, what we're going to do, we'll set up a separate scene. So similar to this one right here. Okay, so we're going to just grab a merge 3D, throw our plane in there. After the merge 3D, we need a renderer. And then we need a merge here where this goes on top. And then we can go right from this override right in. And let's see what we got. I don't see anything. In the image plane, let's see, we got material. Oh, in the renderer, we need, well, that's the camera's lighting and shadows. And let's see. There we go. And then we need the same thing. We need in the merge, we need to change this to multiply. Well, like that. Inside the image plane, it looks a little dark. And that's because we have the lighting on and we just want the shadows. There we go. Now we got just this. You can see the shadows kind of go outside of the car. So we need this mask over here into that. So we we'll grab that and throw it into the merge. This is the opposite. So we need in the merge, we can fix that by going into the merge and then apply mask inverted. And now we got just the shadows on the car as it goes through the text. Okay. But one last thing we have to do, 
Let's look at the final composition. We need that shadow turned off until we get to the point of transition, which is right here. All right. So right there. So we want the shadows to come on at this point. So what we can do is in the merge. Oh, the reason I can't see it is because I still have my background connected. Whoops. So if we go over to the camera, just unhook that. Then we'll see everything. There we go. I was wondering, what the heck? I couldn't see it. Anyway, yeah, so we want that to turn off as it goes in front. So let's see. Where's that point? Okay, right there we want it on. So we can, in the merge, in this merge right here, we're going to put a keyframe on the blend, and then we're going to go back one frame and turn it off. There we go. So now as the car goes through, you're going to see the shadow start casting from the 3D text. And it'll go right down the back of the car. Okay, great. So I know that was a lot to take in, and let's see what we got. So one last thing. Uh, as you're getting ready to render that I would take a look at is let's get close and you may not need to do this it's up to you is to add some motion blur as it's coming it's a little clean uh, there's a bunch of different things we could do we could blur the text and since everything is separated it should be pretty easy to do but one last thing I would do is maybe go into the camera tracker go into settings and click on motion blur and see what we can you know there we go uh, that's not very good it might be good enough for this but maybe four I think four is okay you might need to go up even higher if you really want it to be smooth uh, but for this example let's leave it at four and let's render this out and see what we get okay let's take a look at our final render Okay, that's looking pretty good. I mean, I think there's, um, I can put that on loop. I would say that, you know, we got to work on, probably work on that roto shape, tighten it up a little bit. But overall, this is a pretty good effect. And uh, this video ran way longer than I was anticipating. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out in the comments and I'll try to answer it as soon as I can. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.